This is the local uh, governments and decentralized budget support uh, spotlight uh, uh, session. We are very pleased uh, that you can join us and as organized constituency of local and regional uh, governments that is organizing this session, we are particularly pleased to uh, have a space in this summit um, to provide the perspective of our constituency of local and regional governments around the world. The subnational sphere of government, which we feel has a very important role to play in development um, and uh, that has been following the policy making process of this important uh, uh, partnership throughout uh, the years. Um, it, is, it is no uh, secret to any of you and to the participants of this conference that the Sustainable Development Goals, our ambitious global agendas, will not be reached unless we have an all-of-society, all-of-government approach. No single actor or sphere of government will be able to meet the challenges that we need to face. And challenges they are, you have all heard yesterday the impressive opening ceremony, the statements uh, from, uh, from all uh, the delegates. We are facing a period of overlapping crisis, overlapping crises that come at a moment, uh, at a moment also of opportunity. Uh, crisis we have, but we also have unprecedented knowledge, we have unprecedented capacities, we have a lot of leaders that are willing to innovate, and we have a capacity of partnership that is also unprecedented in time, because we have the technical means to work together as we never did before. I know I sound very hopeful, but that is because I work with mayors, with governors, with councillors, and for those leaders at local level, failure is not an option. Despair is also not an option. Every day in our streets, in our neighborhoods, people are expecting local and regional governments to provide solutions. And what we want to address here today is some ideas of how we can think uh, the international community, the international system of development can support providing those solutions. There are things that will need to change if we want those solutions to come true. And we want to focus on uh, the financing of development and in particular the challenges that we are facing in order to have sufficient financing at local and regional level to meet our expectations and our objectives. It is known to you that over 70%, 65 to 70% of the goals, of the sustainable development goals, of the targets, need to be met with local action, mainly through local service provision. Now, as we face the midterm review of the Sustainable Development Goals in the summit next year, 2023, we all know we are threatening not to meet the targets. And this is basically because we are not putting enough financing in local service provision but also because there are increased crises that are hindering us to meet some of the objectives. I have an incredible uh, two panels here today that are going to be talking about what they are trying to do to advance sustainable development uh, through a strong partnerships and on the financing development plans that they are putting in place. So it is about partnerships, about flows of financing and about the local and regional government approach. Allow me to start uh, with uh, partnerships, partnerships in, uh, in partner countries with subnational entities. And allow me to start the framing of, of this discussion with the voice of a mayor 
mayor, the mayor of Oz in the Netherlands, uh, Bovine Baus Claudemans. Uh, she is here not representing uh, her, uh, her local post, I would say, but the mayor is here on behalf of the networks of local and regional governments, the Dutch network, but also the global networks. Bovine, if you could start with this general approach, uh, maybe we would really welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. And it's wonderful to be here. And um, we're in a broad movement. It's, it's time that local and regional governments are not only seen as actors of development, but also as partners. And we have to realize that it's very hard uh, for partners to talk to cities because there's so many of them and that is why UCLG is so important and why this session is important it's important for us to be here we need to keep coming together and we have to advocate unisono that we have capabilities that are essential for effective development because we as no one else have an intricate network and we are close to the people in our communities and that's where the development needs to land. So we have to act together as one. And that means that we have to have a common focus on localizing the SDGs. And uh, there's a big policy paper and the sheet is behind me. You can have the QR code so you can have some access to the thinking on this movement. Um, but one of the key calls for actions is also very much the topic of decentralized budget support. Because we need more and better access to funding to counter development issues. And there are several strategies, but one of the strategies is to do it at home. Um, my own situation, our Ministry of Foreign Affairs made us, the Netherlands Association of Local Governments, compete and tendering for gaining project money and they said you are one of the many development actors. So we put, off a lot, put in a lot of effort through political lines to come to talk at the table with the minister and to, con, um, to, to tell the minister we are not an actor, we are a partner. We can, we can have a strategic partnership with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs as a local association of local governments so together we can be so much stronger because we can do things that you can't do and you have money, you have capabilities. So we manage to be in, a, in a good strategic talks, in the plans, we get the money, we have uh, recurring policy dialogues and we are a key partner informing them on matters that are related to local governments in the international context. So we manage to get a position at the national plans. So one step is that we have to take at home. At the same time, I think that we need to come together at the UCLG and to talk together with partners. And we have to make sure that finance is one of the key issues that we keep talking about. So we have to help develop uh, new mun municipal investment funds, like we did a project in Ghana to, tr to try to work with this new system. And we should focus on actions that are related to local finance, like fiscal autonomy, local taxation, fiscal transfers. We need to make that a subject of our discussion and we should somehow exchange uh, examples and learn from each other and build uh, communities of practice to really make the, op uh, the subject very important. We should gather and disseminate more examples of uh, successful, innovative local government financing. So I think we need to come together, we need to talk, and we need to focus on this subject also in one of the lines for making sure we, we really locally get to realizing the SDGs. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor. Um, I think one, one of the issues that you're bringing to the table very strongly is that the structural dialogue, the structural dialogue with the national governments that recognize uh, associations and local governments, both as international actors, uh, but also as implementers of, of solutions. Yeah, as partners, as strategic partners. partners. I think that's for us, that was a very big step. Okay. And it, it focuses our energy. We don't have to focus anymore on tendering into projects but we focus on a strategic discussion. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we bring something so else to the table. 
all the policies in development cooperation include that local level yeah. and the uh, the uh, local governments of the Netherlands are seen as permanent partners yeah, of, of, makes that, us both of, of that approach. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mayor, uh, for that. Um, I, I am going to go now to the State Secretary of, uh, of um, uh, Switzerland, to Patricia Dancy. Patricia, when we look at... Um, when we have this conversation and we talk about a structural partnership, uh, one of the, of the challenges that we face as local and regional governments is that sometimes the models that, that we have are models that, um, that are too big for local and regional governments. So the type of investment, the type of amounts that we want to see uh, invested are difficult to be handled by local governments. Is that f something that you identify with? Um, what, what is your main challenge in, in this partnership with local governments? I think if you, have, if you have Switzerland as a partner, one thing you can be sure of, we understand local. Because before there was federal, there was a lot of local. And before there was regional, there was also local. So the questions in Swiss politics is very much around who is from the city, who is from the rural, from which area is someone to bring this all together and to have a common, a common vision. So that is, that is one. We also understand very well that accountability, responsibility and trust is best done at local and regional level because you're the closest to the people that elect you, that sit there, and when you walk through the streets, they will tell you, Mayor, um, what did you do for us today? They will write to you, they will, they will want an exchange with you. So this is something we really, really understand. Then there is another thing, um, what we ask ourselves, how can we support? best uh, these local structures. It's true that the amounts of money, it's one thing, but we are also sitting on the boards of multi um, uh, of, of development banks and uh, of international organizations and what we can do and what we do, we push them to when they draw country plans to also respect the local um, dimension of it and also to invest money there and not only on the central in the cop capital. I think that is one thing that we can do as a government and this goes back to country ownership and localization combined. Then something else what we what we do when we talk about data and the importance of having the, the, the right measurements to, to invest is that where it's possible we invest a lot in digitalization. Because we believe that the service that the state can deliver, if you digitalize it, it can get everywhere if you have the infrastructure to support this digitalization. And that's something that works um, fairly well in a couple of countries that, um, that we support. And we want this accountability to be strengthened. I give you an example that touched me a lot. I was in Kyrgyzstan this year and I was introduced to a group of women. They told me these are the monitors, the auditors and the auditors of what? Of the programs that you support in our, in our town. I said, well, okay. Mm -hmm. So we talked to the auditors, a group of women, very dynamic. They said, we are auditing. I said, what do you find? I said, we found that uh, this and this challenge was not met. So we wrote to, to the representative of the country. said, we know that Swiss money was in this project. So where is the project? And then they said, we got so much pleasure in auditing you pro you programs that we actually started auditing the government and uh, so well okay uh, so we knew that the bridge should be uh, brought here and the road should be tarmacked and it didn't happen so we wrote to the central government we said that we read your plans and so on and so forth i found that a so splendid extraordinary example of how people can actually be part of of uh, of the development of the town but going then towards the the center if it it's not delivered and maybe in my last point it's not so much linked to government, but more to partners. Uh, what I find extremely difficult when we talk about localization and local partners is how can we support the local partners that are not government, NGOs, um, uh, the, the society that is very close to the communities that we want to support. We only support um, NGOs or local partners that can read English, French or, or Spanish. Uh, and or Arabic. Uh, we support them if they can fill in the form of the project management that we provide. Uh, 
they are definitely good, but maybe the best ones are the ones that don't speak our language, that cannot fill in the form, that deliver the best service to the people because they know them best. So there is a challenge there. And also through our international partner, we push for this, but this has limits when it comes from, from a government. So I will maybe stop here. Well, thank you, thank you very much. Um, it is... Um it is very important to understand that local, the local level, is not only the sphere of government, but also other actors. This is indeed very, very important. But I think even in supporting other actors, it is very relevant to go hand in hand with the local government that is there. A lot of the problems that, 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 we, are, uh, that we are facing is that... Uh, th 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 there is in development cooperation, particularly in crisis uh, and humanitarian uh, crisis, uh, the local sphere of government, the subnational sphere of government is left aside. And there is a whole governance structure that is created in parallel. Uh, through NGOs and the international humanitarian forces. I think with the emerging uh, uh, situations of emergency and, and crisis that, that, we, that we are facing, it will be very critical to create a space for collaborations of local actors, both spheres of government and non-spheres of, of, of government. But I, I really appreciate this. I, I can also, and I'm sure... In that, in the in the second uh, in, in our second in the second part of this conversation, we will address this challenge in the system. So, indeed, just like you have described that many NGOs are not able to fill in the right forms, maybe they don't have the capacity, or we don't have the right forms to fill. Right? <laughs> That's another way to 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 frame it. There are many local and regional governments that do not have the capacity to meet the international processes, but they could be very important resources to implement at the local level. And that is part of the change that I think we need to bring together and that this kind of session can, can serve uh, to, uh, to address. There is, we need to create the environment together, right? To have the right actors sitting at the table. So thank you very much for those re reflections. I hopefully we can come back uh, to that. I'm, I'm going, uh, um, I'm going to go uh, now to, to another, uh, to, to another uh, minister, Viviana Casco Molina, Minister uh, of, of uh, Planning, uh, the Secretary of, uh, of Paraguay. And um, Viviana, you have been sharing with us in the preparation of, of the session that you have a national uh, plan and, and, and you want to share uh, with us your views on the implementation, what you are facing on this national plan. Uh, bienvenida, Ministra. Welcome, Minister. As a country, we have our national development plan. As you so well put it, <clears throat> the major challenge we have currently is to take it out to the territory uh, on the ground. In other words, we're working with local government for the implementation of the sustainable development plan at the local level, but also in terms of the urban uh, and territorial plan. One of the challenges that you just mentioned, and I think it's the most crucial one, most important one, is that within the municipalities or the local governments, it's the lack of technical skills to be able to really design public policies with a vision not only at the municipal level but also at the regional level <clears throat> and that this should also be reflected at the national level to be sure this work that we're doing from the technical secretariat planning side we're doing this thanks to international uh, cooperation uh, development cooperation we don't have resources for this we're doing it through different forms of um, financing all of them are cooperation the major uh, challenge that we're working on actually is that local governments need to be able to ha have access to this type of cooperation so that they can precisely strengthen their capacities and we see this as one of the main challenges the other one is that we have identified is the lack of information an information gap in other words it's made it possible for us to have better monitoring of public policy at the local level. And that is one of the major weaknesses that we as a country have. And international cooperation is also supporting us there. And we're working with the United Nations on 
in some of the municipal areas in order to have monitoring systems and carry out an assessment or evaluation through voluntary information systems at the territorial level. <clears throat> and today, as far as Paraguay, a very centralized country, uh, the municipalities have not even 20% of the resources that are their own resources. They're financed, in other words, with, min with resources that are transferred from the central ministries, and all of this is a part of the work that has to be done with them to strengthen their technical skills, technical capacity, to be able to design public policies and to be able to uh, get greater resources, obtain greater resources, so that they can fund uh, imp significant projects and projects that also work at the regional level. And the link with between local policies and the uh, national policies is another uh, pillar that we're working on so that they can also feel that they're a part of the development, feel ownership for the development of the country because we have some, some localities that are so far from the central administration and there is very strong uh, break uh, in, in, the, in the links between them as was so well put earlier. On the territory, they know a lot about the citizenship and they are very familiar with the various challenges at the local level. And this must be reflected in the public policies. I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister, for covering so many topics in that extremely brief uh, uh, statement. It's very relevant, very important to have a plan, to have a national plan. We have to have a national plan so that afterwards, we can strengthen the uh, capacities of local governments. But when you have a national plan, uh, the idea is not to replace the substitute, stand in for, if you will, the local governments, the national uh, the local governments. We want to ensure that we're all on the same page and that every uh, area of government has the skills to be able to tackle this. And another subject that I think is extremely important is the fact that we do not have sufficient resources at the national level and the international contributions continue to be uh, incredibly important. But in fact, uh, legally, there are many limitations uh, that prevent local governments from having access to this. If you have another comment, uh, then we'll close that uh, session. I you're thinking of changing the legal framework so that the municipal municipalities can also have access to these international funds? Or is that not a part of the reform? I think that the CIS. I think the main problem is a lack of uh, capacities for projects. Uh, and it goes up to national financing and international financing. We are implementing plans to strengthen these capacities to be able to carry out projects. They'll be financed by different sources, more than what we have now. We have to have a national plan, and this national plan has to be aligned with international commitments. But above all, things have to be aligned with the local challenges. We have to have a national plan, we have to work with local governments, and we under, need to under, be able to visualize the local change, challenges in the national plan. Thank you very much. With the ability to develop these new mechanisms, therefore, to bring in new resources. Thank you so very much. We're going to stay on this continent. We're going to move to Ecuador with uh, Demora Santiago, which is a province in the Amazon area. And there we have a plan that we'd like to share with you. Welcome, R uh, Rafaela Akitan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your invitation. I represent three areas, Chuar, in the Mora Santiago and in the Equatorian Amazon area. The regional government uh, works with the Amazon area. And we have a plan 
we are trying to naturally conserve uh, our resources for to have sustainable territory. The people and the different nationalities living in there are underserved. We don't even have water or light. Very, and we, of course, we don't have roads or highways, things like that. The indigenous peoples just in the past, think, past 20 years have been able to come up with a uh, local government finally. But the most interesting point is that we have a virgin territory. We have lagoons, we have uh, uh, jungle, and so this makes the situation very unusual. We have, we're trying to save 1.3 million hectares of virgin forest. So what are we proposing for the world? We're asking them to help us to conserve this territory through cooperation and strengthening our ability, uh, helping the people who live there. So we will be able to have sustainable use of production and use uh, technology and through study and have an ecological system. So because it is useful for the world, the climate and the forest is useful for the world, and we offer in 1.3 million hectares in our province alone. But we're not stopping there with the local, the neighboring uh, provinces in the central south of the Equatorian area. We all have more than 5 million hectares of land. And they've been identified as virgin forest and jungle. And so we are appealing to the world to cooperate with us so we can conserve this land. We want this to be uh, to actually be carried out. We'll do our best. But we want to work together. And that's why we're here. And we have one of the ancestral members of our community uh, in Santiago, who is of Shuar origin, and he came to this area at the age of three, and he's, we are trying to protect this land, and it is a chilly climate. And the air has not yet been polluted. So we invite all of you to come and see the interculturality in the area. Thank you. Thank you. This is a great responsibility. I understand that for all of us, not only the environment, uh, but the virgin area is the lungs of humanity. But it's a responsibility for the people living there. So the proposal is very pertinent to, de to see development as a universal responsibility. And we have to shoulder this responsibility, all of us, and see what tools we can develop so that we can support development uh, and, and save the ability and help the people living in this territory. And that is our proposal. That's what we're trying to carry out. The Secretary General of the cities, uh, of the world networks of cities, well, we have ended this panel with very important questions, but I'd like to m say something before we move on to the second part of our discussion. And I will give the floor now to our next speaker. Um, yeah. No, very briefly, just, just one, one quick reflection, uh, Amelia and everyone, which is 
there's these this two ideas. One is this is a shared responsibility. And the other one is it's not because it's hard that we're not going to try it, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and this idea that it's so easy to find excuses. There's so many uh, national subnational governors. They're so different. They don't speak the languages. They don't know. They don't have the capabilities. So it's so easy to just say, well, that's too complicated, that's too complex. What I really liked was how the speakers were coming from their own experience, someone saying in Switzerland we have this experience that territory is so important to people. Or in the Netherlands we come from the experiences of the local authorities. I think that's crucial, that we, instead of looking at how difficult it is, we look at where we start at home with these own capacities and then start doing the homework so that we can meet a challenge like the, the last we heard from uh, uh, the mm. Equator and Amazon. Thank you very much, Jordi. We, what we are bringing to the discussion and to the summit in general is lack of capacity cannot be a pretext not to change the model. And we all seem to agree, all spheres of government represented here, all actors seem to agree that we do need to change the model. We were talking with the team this morning and, and, and we were saying only 5% of the international aid reaches local governments or is invested in, 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 in the local and subnational sphere. 5% of the limited international aid. And the minister from Paraguay was saying uh, the, the investment at, at local level does not even reach 20%. I can tell you in most countries it's around 8% in our uh, observatory on subnational finance with the OECD, check it. Um, it's, it's, in most cases it's around 8%, eh, the investment on, on subnational financing. We need to change the mechanisms if we want this to work. And we, we, we are going to address this in the second part of this panel. I want to, I want to say that we have someone that is joining us online, is, is, is my dear friend and the deputy mayor of Libreville, uh, Annie Christerlinburg, who had visa issues, and this is why she could not be with us, but she's um, uh, very committed to, uh, to, to development. So welcome, Annie Christel. I'm going to call on you uh, later. I want to start with Yoya Alco um, Alcoxeba um, of the General Directorate for Development of uh, uh, the region of uh, Catalonia, um, a, a, a subnational sphere. I mean, not all is about cities, it's also about territories, uh, 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 correct? Um, so we want we want to uh, to to talk. Uh, we know uh, uh, that the region of Catalonia is a very big actor in development uh, 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 cooperation. Uh, Joya, how is uh, the region looking at uh, financing development plans, and what are the main challenges we are facing? The floor is yours. Thank you for coming. Working? The, yeah. It's working, yes. Okay, thank you very much indeed, Emilia, for this introduction and uh, uh, for being here. Voy a cambiar el español. I'm going to speak in Spanish, if you agree, so it'll be better balanced. In the government of Catalonia, you know, the government has been very active. Uh, this has been going on for many years, uh, and you know that the about the problem of decentralization has been shown as an example. And the government of Catalonia has been very active in this regard in many areas and one uh, above all. And here I'm responding you know, about the challenges that we've had as a local regional authority. Well, the answer is that is participating in networks. There were many speakers yesterday at the summit who spoke about that. And we're not going to go anywhere we, if we stay work alone. We have to work together in a coordinated manner. This is a challenge clouded. In Catalonia, this has been very clear for many years. Uh, it means that we have to work within networks, uh, and we are p 
part of them for many we have been for many years, and this is, is, is an opportunity for us to be able to share and to coordinate our work together with other partners, with other actors. As the mayor said, local authorities are not simply beneficiaries, but actors and relevant actor as well. They are partners, not only beneficiaries. This is a challenge to, to try to make efforts on these platforms and these networks, and this gives us a unique opportunity to be able to coordinate our work and work far better to have effective financing. And I'm going to be giving the floor to Amelia about financing. But in considering this, I would say we've had better periods and we have had periods that where there was a reduction and we have been aiming for 100 percent. Well, we have been working, we've had cooperation that was self-financed at certain times. And we try to finance it ourselves, and we look for financing elsewhere, and we try to work with a different type of uh, player, like the European Union. We've been trying to work with European funds, and we tried it. It worked out well, and it helped us to such an extent and this is the answer to your question about uh, uh, capacities of local authorities that it was that we brought in other local authorities uh, to join in this european adventure because it was a little bit much for us alone but we started working with other partners in europe uh, and other european networks and in lately over the past few months and here I'm winding up we have brought in new elements uh, to find uh, more financing and have access to it. That is co-financing European projects with the EU. So when we're, the, we are summoned, we contact our European partners. And we've also been studying the possibility of uh, uh, co-financing uh, other European projects. Uh, there will be a tender th uh, for concerning millions. And then we try to co-participate. And we would be a micro donor uh, because we're regional, but it allows us to experiment and to learn more about the mechanisms of finance and we co-participate with larger partners. Thank you very much. You um, uh, yourselves as, as micro-donors. You are micro-donors for the international community of donors. Yeah. But you are very relevant donors for the local and regional government constituency. And I think that is the gap that we need to bridge somehow. With what I mean... Admitting that we are so successful in peer-to-peer, local-to-local, association-to-association, learning and cooperation, that decentralized cooperation has been uh, around for over uh, 100 years and that it is uh, there to stay, why don't we manage to enhance the investment in this mechanism? Why are national governments and the international community not meeting that need. Instead of you co-financing with yes. the European Commission, why is the European Commission maybe not financing more? I shouldn't complain about the European Commission okay. because it's one of the most relevant uh, donors. But I think national governments uh, uh, still have a, a, a very big barrier to yeah. do this and not to talk about um, uh, development banks we're working with them, but the investment is not there. 
and the Bretton Woods institutions, I mean, the, 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 the World Bank, uh, etc. I think that part of the discussion that we are opening up today uh, is, is why isn't this happening? What is missing in the mechanisms? Why are municipal banks not working as they should everywhere in the world? They are starting to disappear in many parts of the world. Why are municipal bonds not, uh, not working? What are we missing? Uh, so, uh, so we are just giving you a taster of the kind of things that we feel the partnership should be uh, discussing in the future. And allow me now uh, to go uh, to... Um, to the Deputy Mayor of Livreville, to uh, Annie Christel. Um, Annie, can you hear as well? Can you hear me? Good, good. We hear you. Welcome, Madam Mayor. What would you like to share with us following this uh, conversation that we've had about decentralized cooperation uh, concerning development. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Amelia. Congratulations to Switzerland for this summit. I'm not saying it's a last chance uh, summit uh, for the local. No, not at all. We think that all the people who have spoken are stand as proof with the UCLG that the voice of the collectivity is being heard. So today I would like to endorse what has been said and just add that actually our view as a local government follows this trend to advocate and for this, to appeal for national representatives will work for decentralization. All the all cities do not have the same level of decentralization and this can pose a problem for financing. So we feel that the achieving the CDGs will rely on decentralization. And if we can't face up to these challenges concerning urbanization or financing material issues, then this won't happen. So we attended a Congress of the UCLG and we heard about people uh, talking about different issues, the population, governments, people from all over came, and we feel that we have to push further in this regard. We have to come up with innovative mechanisms. So we don't, we have to get together all the participants and national and governments, civil society, uh, investors, private sector, the public sector. We have to get them all together because we don't have enough dialogue amongst uh, these groups so that the collectivity can develop this view. We have to have more local investment and we must be able to go beyond certain instruments that we'll have so that we will be able to allow local governments to play their uh, a meaningful role in achieving the SDGs. So we hope that the United Nations, that the whole system of the UN, will be able to work with the private sector to, I don't want to say put pressure, but in, in, but perhaps to harmonize the work and in synergetically with regional governments. Thank you 
for this uh, meaningful discussion. We encourage you to continue to work to carry the voice of the people wherever it is needed. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It's always very interesting to speak with you. Thank you to bringing in this dimension of decentralization because we can talk about capacity, but we need to talk about decentralization as well and the system in general. We're going to wind up our interventions with it to Rose Gambera. Secretary General of the East Africa Local Governments Association. Um, your truth embodies our efforts as constituency to uh, create, to self-organize, to create uh, um, federations at uh, a national level, but also at regional and international uh, uh, level. Uh, the East African Local Government Association is an example within our ecosystem of, of networks that is seeking to uh, strengthen uh, local government in, um, in East Africa. Uh, and Gertrude, you, you feel uh, firsthand uh, some of the limitations uh, uh, that we face when attracting investment and capacity uh, building. Uh, your inputs for this conversation on how to finance um, uh, development, and then I am going to open the floor for last comments from everyone before coming back to Jordi for, uh, for the wrap up. Uh, welcome, dear friend. It's so good to have you with us. Thank you so much, Emilia, and uh, it's a pleasure for me to join this very esteemed panel to discuss issues of development cooperation assistance. Um, uh, coming from our experiences in East Africa, in East Africa we are seven partner states and we do a lot of uh, engagement on behalf of the local governments with the partner government levels. But one of the striking issues when it comes to discussing issues of development cooperation is the fact that um, outside, first of all, when you look at increasing funding, we outside the traditional sources we know, we have the intergovernmental transfers, we have local governments having the responsibility to collect taxes, to finance service delivery, is the development support that's coming in. And the development support that's coming in seems to hang at national level. It is not going down. And you rightly say that around 5 to 8 percent is really going down. The issue here is it is because the local governments are not on the decision-making table. They are not there when the agreements are being discussed and they're not there to include their priorities in those, in those agreements. So we're saying that we can do it differently. When you are engaging national governments, when you are bringing the development support in the countries, ensure that the local governments are represented. And the beauty is that we have collective voices, such as IALGA at the regional level, but we also have our members who we convene, but are found at country level. Every county has an association of local governments. So if there are too many, it's, it's complicated. We've made it simple. We have the voice at national level, bring them on board, empower them with the information, get them to speak for the members, and let's have those cooperation agreements, the development assistance agreements and programs defined properly with the voice of local governments in there. I think that one would be very good. But that should also come with a little bit of awareness for the local governments to know that this is the kind of program we're bringing in the country, and these are the thoughts that we have for you, or this is what we have prepared for you. Build more awareness, and still this can be done with the platforms of the associations doing this very well. But when, when you go in a little bit deeper, when I look across the span of our countries in East Africa, the other challenges, and here I'm going to look at the work plans. Most of the countries have come up with national development plans. And increasingly, we see these national development plans taking a top-down approach. Yet ideally, the fact of anchoring decentralization is bottom up. It means the national plan should reflect the priorities of the local governments. Go pick those local government plans, make sure they're integrated in the national plan. And in that way, we believe that the funding you allocate to the national development plan will be able to speak to the local priorities and go down there. Perhaps we could also put a little bit of tweak because 
when it comes to national budget allocations for these plans, we see funding for local governments coming in very little. Can we define policies and laws that provide a clear percentage, something up to 40% minimum for development funding to local governments? And can you ring fence that? Because for example, we saw when we had the crises, we saw that national governments had to reallocate funds for COVID, for example. They touched on the development funds for local governments and that affects the problem. So can we refrain things and tell them if you have to source anywhere else, please do not touch the development funds for local governments. That would be very, very helpful. But also maybe speaking to, before I leave the funding aspect at national level, maybe um, we could also speak to having um, supportive instruments. You mentioned the EC funding. The, the communique on local authorities, it did wonders in our region. Absolutely. It did fantastic wonders because now the EU delegations, when they are defining programs, they refer to that communique and they ask where are the associations, where are the local governments, and we've seen more support coming in. So mm -hmm. um, we could follow that approach. Maybe the UN could also pick that and have similar communiques to inform the, the country offices in that respect. Um, lastly, um, I wanted to talk also a little bit about um, policies around innovative financing. Local government's fiscal decentralization as it is, they'll say, oh, you have the capacity to generate own revenues to support local service delivery. But again, we have limitations in laws that guide our fiscal decentralization. What we are saying is that can the discussions around development cooperation also touch on unlocking those laws to allow local governments to borrow, for example, like you say, you've said. We have green bonds coming up, but they cannot be accessed if local governments are not al allowed to explore that, that, that law by, by law. I mean, if you're supposed to go there, you have to go through bureaucracies of approvals from national governments. Can we open up those laws to empower local governments to be able to use those options available in the innovative fin financing? Ca um, of course, capacity building is important, working with um, the fiscal instruments that come around the innovative financing options. So it is indeed a, a critical investment area, but a useful one, so to speak. Um, before I also conclude on the issue of capacity, I'm also that kind of person who is a little bit concerned when we keep saying local governments don't have capacity. I think it is the responsibility and it is the commitment of governments in many of the policies we've seen in our regions to provide technical capacity support to these local governments. So it's time we stop that narrative of saying they don't have capacity and we talk about how do we maybe work with the national governments we're working with to pass on the technical support to the local governments if it is lacking. But I also believe that over time we've built quite a lot of capacity. Local governments do have capacity. They just need to be supported and navigated around how to do things better together with the support that we need. Peer-to-peer -peer learning. What can I say? We cannot emphasize, emphasize this enough. Uh, we've talked about uh, development cooperation amongst ourselves. In East Africa, we've seen entities like VNG working very closely with our associations. We've seen entities like the Commonwealth Local Government Forum working very closely with the associations. We've seen entities like ICLE, UCLG, they come aboard to work with conveners such as ourselves where you'll find the country level associations to build practice to build capacity building, exchange and learnings, which trickle down to our member states. What a wonderful avenue to work with the development partners and to take advantage of this. So I think the options and alternatives are plenty and we need to leverage them and they are local, so to speak. So thank I'll you very there. much. Uh, thank you very much for, for these, yeah, to draw them. and, and uh, you have brought something that we really pushed for during the Addis Abeba Financing for Development Summit, and that was uh, putting into the recommendations um, a 20% minimum of uh, development aid that would go to uh, to local governments. We, we never managed to, uh, to get that. N neither have we managed to include that in the new urban agenda as a percentage of investment at, at local level. And we now see how following uh, the COVID uh, pandemic, we, we, where we all realize how important local service provision was instead of increasing the budgets, we have seen the local budgets um, uh, decreasing. Um, also very important issue about um, 
what a difference the 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 the, the policies of the European Union has ma have made. I, I fully agree with you, and maybe a thought to give to open the floor for the last uh, for the last round. Uh, we will have ten to fifteen more minutes because we started late. Um, is uh, maybe we need to rethink. Facing the Sustainable Development Goals uh, Summit, the midterm review, and the high impact uh, commitments that the system is is looking to to receive from our uh, from our uh, constituency, we want to bring high impact uh, local uh, commitments based on the voluntary local and subnational reviews. Would it be maybe an idea for development partners to come together under such a mechanism and to finance together with uh, uh, local uh, government actors, local government networks, uh, create a facility that actually finances localization. And that finances localization with a small funding for the bigger picture, but very relevant funding that will allow us to create the pipelines that then can access bigger financing. It's, it's a thought that I want to leave with you because I think we, we need to, just like we have done with the green funding, and I think to a certain extent it is working and we are changing the ecosystem of financing, certainly in adaptation, more than in mitigation, but certainly in, in adaptation. I think we need to come with something like that for localization. So that, that's an invitation for, uh, for this summit um, to consider. So a last uh, round, a, a quick reflection on, on what you have heard before uh, we, we close this. And I thank you all of you for sticking to, to time. Um, allow me to start with you, Minister. Any, any thoughts uh, from, uh, from your side, from what you have heard? You, for your comments that enlightens also us and guides us because we also learn each time we meet and uh, I think we're on the right track. The, our challenge will be to convince the federal government that local is beautiful <laughs> and that it's necessary and that it's helping the whole country to develop and that's what we bring also from our own experience into our development programs. We will continue doing that convincingly I hope not also, only with government but also with the, the partners I mentioned in my introduction. So thank you very much for, for, this, uh, for this panel and for your insights and uh, in light discussions. Yeah, I think that our constituency needs to ensure that, that we create that table of dialogue for localization. Uh, I think that is going to be our effort as we work towards the, to the summit to, to convince governments that uh, local is, is beautiful. So you've got our, our commitment from that and, and we hope to see the, the, uh, the Swiss government sitting at that table. Thank you very much. Uh, Minister, from, I, I'm going to follow that order t till we reach uh, Jordi. Please. Okay. Um. I would like to echo what the minister was saying, which was to say uh, work with the local governments, uh, help both them to build their technical capacities. Uh, it's not that they don't have technical capacity, but they need to increase this. And we have had a good experience of this in Paraguay, where there are municipalities that are working on a voluntary basis. And uh, we can see that there is a strong commitment from local governments. And what we should do is uh, help from the central government to provide them with opportunities to develop their investment projects. I think this is an important step. And I think that we should be working in a coordinated manner. I think that is what we need to do. We need to create alliances, not only between the different levels of government, but also multilaterally and through international cooperation. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. Mayor, do you have any final thoughts, uh, having heard from the different colleagues? Now, uh, this uh, is a public entity that has been working to ensure that we have a decentralization. And we're going to keep doing this in Ecuador to ensure that uh, there is a greater uh, participation of our local governments. Uh, we are a country uh, that has oil. 
Uh, but we know that the uh, Amazonian area in Ecuador supports uh, the central government, uh, and we need to also be taken into consideration. We, as a uh, provincial governments uh, need to ensure that uh, we have uh, somebody leading international cooperation. And uh, I have a colleague who is here who making uh, contacts with people. And I would like to thank my colleague uh, for doing this, because uh, this is the kind of support that we need. And it is the support that we have received to be able to be here. And the other thing we need is to ensure that we have a healthy environment. We are working united. We need to ensure that we are using the territory sustainably, that we are working from our ancestral cosmovision. Never, which means that we need to ensure people live without pollution, that we live in an environment with crystal clear waters, with oxygen. So thank you very much for allowing me to be here so that I could share these very important ideas with you. Thank you very much, ma'am for reminding us that we are not just talking about asking for help. We are asking to uh, ensure that we listen to what indigenous peoples can offer for development. And I do think this is very important. And I really do think uh, that we need to hope that the high level of decentralization that uh, was reached in Ecuador is not lost. We need to hope that the financial commitments made by the central government are fulfilled in Ecuador. And uh, we know that Anne and Gope are defending these at national level. Thank you very much, Mayor, for those. From your side. Yeah, thank you. It's, uh, it's always nice to, to be in a panel. And then I really want to pick up some points that I want to take home. Because one point that it's not a reason because it's hard not to do it. So that's a, that's a commitment. But I like the, the things that I heard is once the movement, I, I love the story about women auditors, because the money needs to be spent effectively on the goals that they want to reach. So I think that's a wonderful idea. And it, so it, that's sort of like a movement. I think that's one thing. And the other things I heard a lot about the system and um, especially um, from East Africa, Maybe it's time that I not only talk to my uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs about my position as a local association of, 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 of local governments, but I should bring the points that are made here on that table. So we should incorporate in the talks with our Ministry of Foreign Affairs that they have to set standards for local um, local government being included in their policies and try to get this percentage over there and try to make that also into a system. And we need to be there when the ambassadors of my country come back to the Netherlands and make sure that we are at the table and that we can provide uh, examples from what we are doing. So those are s sort of like things that I pick up and I want to bring home. Thank you very much for well, having the opportunity. Well, thank you very much. It is indeed so that when we sit with the international community, we very often hear all the limitations they have to make it possible for local government to be financed. But I think what we bring to the summit is we, we want to, to be the game changer and when we want to challenge you to think differently because the models are there to be changed if we believe that they can be more efficient. So, uh, yet to draw some more thoughts on this briefly. Well, mine, um, okay. mine would be very simple. And uh, for me is to remind us uh, about our tenets where we started from on our governance agenda. If we're talking about governments for the people, of the people, by the people, then we should not be working hard to convince governments that they mm -hmm. have to partner with local governments. If we are working with governments in the development world, and governments have given us local governments as their partners in implementation, 
then we don't need to be convinced that local governments are a partner with government to work with. So for me, this is what I live with this summit. And I hope that when I go back to East Africa, I will see more involvement of local governments on that table when we are discussing development cooperation. Thank you very much. In any case, you, you, you live with the commitments of the international municipal movement to convene the, the donors this, this, this coming year to see how we can enhance investment in, in, in localization. I am afraid, my dear friend, that there is a lot of convincing to do yet, but I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. I go to Yoya, then to Anne Christelle, and then Jordi, you will be wrapping up. Thank uh, you, Emilia. Yoya. I will be very brief. I completely agree with what our colleague from East Africa just said, and that is we have opportunities and capacity, so what we need to do is take advantage of these. We shouldn't be afraid of local and regional authorities. We need to take advantage of them. Because uh, if we are afraid, then we will uh, only look at the threats. Because there are so many of them, so we need to overcome this fear. Just to, to give you an example, um, only a few weeks ago, we from uh, different parts of uh, Spain, uh, different stakeholders, were talking about uh, renewing uh, the Spanish law and cooperation, which uh, is a law regulating everybody at every level of government. Uh, in terms of cooperation. So these are the kinds of spaces that we need to take advantage of. So local and uh, regional authorities took advantage of this space existing to ensure that this national law included the relevance of decentralized cooperation. Now, this is something that we cannot overlook. So let us not be afraid and take advantage of the opportunities that exist. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joya. Joya. And Christel, what comments would you like to make following on from the comments you've heard so far? Je vous entends pas. We cannot hear you. Please try again. Yes, now we can hear you. Please go ahead. I will be very brief. COVID-19 really put the entire world to the test. Natural disasters, are also testing many populations. So these populations that are suffering are actually turning to their local authorities, to town authorities. So we need to call on support for local authorities from the private sector, investors, and the central government, as well as uh, the United Nations system so that we can ensure that we create the tools that we need to ensure that there is local investment, but also to ensure that trust exists between those who provide local investment and the local authorities that put this investment to the benefit of local populations. So I really hope that we will have other opportunities to speak about this, and particularly in person, because I was unable to travel. But anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. And Christelle. Christelle was talking before about about uh, the Pact for the Future, which is which is our uh, strategic vision uh, from uh, we we think beyond United Cities and local governments on behalf of the full constituency is our contribution to the summit of the future that will take place on 2024. And in that Pact for the Future, we are giving thoughts, we are giving opinions and visions. Uh, around things that are both our competence, also about things that will never be in our competence. Uh, and that is because we aspire to having societies, and this is bringing back, back to what I have heard in this panel, is to shaping societies, to shaping the world, not from macro political interest, but from the aspirations of the communities, of the people. And we go back to the women auditors and, and, to, this, and to the indigenous people, because the world needs to be shaped 
not according to the interest of abstract powers, but to the dreams and aspirations of the neighbors that live in the cities and territories everywhere. So this is a bit our hope, uh, Jordi. Do you think that this panel can contribute to shape that? Uh, and, and do you think our aspirations for the summit of the SDGs uh, next year ca can be met around localization? Thoughts from your side as a wrap-up? This panel has already made a contribution. And... Uh, all of the panelists have, but I think uh, uh, Gertrude Roth, Camuera, Muyinga put it in, in very clear words when say, well, capabilities are there. And my question on capabilities, and, and, and to move on from this, is are those donors who don't find capabilities not finding capabilities to advance sustainable development goals or not finding capabilities to navigate bureaucratic systems, prejudice, and lack of knowledge of local systems? Because if it's the second, then the capabilities maybe need to be built elsewhere, not in the local authorities. <laughs> um, so I, I th th then other, th other uh, ideas that, that I'm living with is, of course, the idea of bringing local governments to the decision table of when and how and, and, and where the money will go. And then it will be much easier to find the capabilities and find everything else. Um, to be strategic partners, as was said, in both ends of the, the cooperation uh, pipeline. Um, there was also a lot at the beginning, in particular, about planning. And um, it's interesting how we worry so much about the ability of local authorities to plan, which is very important, and those are capabilities worth building. But my question is also, are always donors and lenders respectful of those plans as they are made in the in the uh, in the local areas, or are they coming with their big uh, rules and money and priorities, and then expecting the local actors that first they have asked to have their own plans to then adapt to those agendas? Um, Emilia and others, you've been talking a lot about the difficulty to go small. I represent a network of large cities and metropolitan areas. There's also difficulties in going large. Because there is also a prejudice that local is small. Local can not necessarily be small. And sometimes there is a, a fear of going up to a certain scale with a local authority. Well, you know, let's give them this little money, but like, come on, you know, this very big BRT or metro project, that's far too much for a local authority, right? So uh, we cannot trust them with so much. So it is difficult to get the small amounts that are needed, and it is also difficult. The large, the large infrastructure amounts. that exactly. we need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's both and that is needed. And that's, again, it's, it is complicated. There's many, and they're very different, these local authorities. And yes, it does take an effort to understand and be at the, at the right scale. But I want to end up um, uh, where, with something that the, the, the intervention of the prefect of, of Morona Santiago really sparked in me, which is this idea that... Uh, uh, local and, and regional authorities wear these disproportionate burdens on global issues. And to move on from the Amazon jungle, which is incredibly important, uh, I, that made me think of another example that is very present uh, when I speak to the members of my network, which is, which is cities like Tehran or Amman or Bogota, who are hosting millions, literally, of people. Uh, that are displaced by violence, by drought, by other phenomena. And those are the big ones. Small, small cities can host five, six times their population. Those are responsibilities that, that local governors are taking that have nothing to do with their own uh, administration. And yet, as Emilia was saying at the beginning, not doing it is not an option. They just have to do it. So local territories are carrying disproportionate burdens. And if the SDGs are serious, if we are serious that they are our shared responsibility. If we are serious about the SDGs. Exactly. If we <laughs> yes. believe in the very idea of SDGs, in that development isn't a choice, but it's actually our shared responsibility, then going local, again, isn't a choice. It's a must. And so all the ideas that have been expressed here, I think, very eloquently illustrate this point.
Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Jordi. Thank you uh, to all of you here in the audience. Uh, these dialogues will continue throughout uh, throughout the day and and in between summits. Uh, the the work of the constituency does not stop here. We hope to have uh, sparked and inspiring some thoughts. Thank you to all of you. You've been a brilliant panel and very pleased to have been able to facilitate. Oh, there is a. It, there is an emergency intervention. I'm sorry, please go ahead. There was, was no intervention from the floor envisaged, but I am very happy to allow that since we are not in a very big rush to stop. Um, um, can we help with the mic? Maybe if you come up front, uh, we'll give you a mic because we will need it for interpretation. Yes. 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 Want to start talking? Okay. Uh, I will. I will speak in Spanish because. Uh, um. Eh, agradezco. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. My name is uh, Rosa Bell. I'm co-chair of uh, the Civil Society Alliances for Development and member of the feminist group. I would also like uh, to thank you because I know that uh, this was not planned, but I did not want to leave the room before saying the following. I am concerned. I am concerned about the lack of uh, any mention of civil society's participation in local government. And this is actually one of the ways in. No, that was mentioned. Uh, uh, it was mentioned in the first part of the panel. No, I just have to say that I think uh, one of the best alliances for civil society organizations, and in fact, uh, our hope that we can have an impact on development agendas at an international level, go through local governments. Uh, so I would just like to say that uh, there is a problem when it comes to uh, having ever-shrinking spaces and shrinking funding. So how do we avoid competing with each other? This is something that we see in Spain, for example. Because of a lack of funds, local authorities have then turned to European funds, which means that we end up competing for funding with civil society organizations. So I'd just like to see how we can overcome this uh, competition. Thank you very much for speaking. I just wanted to clarify that this was brought up in the first part of the panel because we, as the international local government movement, see partnerships with civil society as part of our DNA. So it is a natural alliance that my own um, organization has uh, an advocacy group where we also have the civil society participation and for international processes. So I just wanted to say that we do work with civil society. I hope that this did come out in uh, the debates. Uh, this competition that exists is not just between local governments and civil society, but between, for example, regional governments and local governments, or different levels of government and local governments. So what we need to do is ensure that we are creating partnerships so that we can capitalize on what exists. And this needs to be a partnership that includes absolutely everybody. I believe that there will be an announcement made housekeeping of you I do need to close uh, thank you very much for your understanding Natalie 
before giving the big applause, I would just like to remind you that we have the session now beginning at half past, the session on localization, uh, localizing development cooperation, reaching the furthest behind, and you will have coffee in the room so you can grab a, a cup of coffee. And it's not on the program, but the lunch will be just served they are in Zurich room just at one o'clock. So there is lunch there Thank afterwards. You so Thank you so much.